Bear Bets is back. NFL edition. Myself, Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P. Will Hill joining us for the Gambling Group Chat in a little while. A game in Germany, uh, in Germany last week certainly didn't disappoint there early on Sunday. No, it didn't. Yeah, the Chiefs are an ugly 7-2, and two, but I'll take it as a Chiefs fan. 7-2 and two is 7-2, and two, man. Look, the defense look, is incredible. Yes, because they look, look, looked early on like the... Uh, like the Chiefs might run away with it, and then uh, second half got. All right, hey. what what is <sighs> some of the decisions by some of these players? Why are you catching a, a punt on your own two yard line and not letting so, it go into the end zone? It seems to be a thing lately where punt returners are just catching balls inside the five all over the sport. Not, not just in, in, in the NFL it happens in college football. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what Harmon was doing there. Um, but you know, the chiefs are interesting, right? Cause their defense is better than ever before. I mean, this is the best mm-hmm. defense any read has had. I mean, 2013 was a good defense, but he's never had, you know, the, the Super Bowl year in 19, the, the second half of the year was much better. Obviously last year was getting better, but this defense now is carrying the team, which I never thought I'd say about an Andy Reid Chiefs team. The defense is legitimately good. Um, and so they're sort of getting away with making mistakes like fielding a punt right there. They're getting away with the refusal on third down to ever quarterback sneak ever um, and just run some some nonsense play that they that you know that, that they think is going to work. And so they need to work through their offensive line hasn't played as great recently. They're obviously, the wide receiver issue is a problem. But when you're seven and two in your Kansas City, and the thing you have to work on is your offense. I think you feel okay about that. And on the flip side, the the, the Dolphins are definitely not a Super Bowl contender. Like they're no. they're probably what sixth best in the AFC now, right? Chiefs, Bengals, well, Ravens, Ravens, Jag. I put the Jaguars ahead of them. See, I don't. Is Buffalo ahead of them? No. Buffalo beat them forty-eight to twenty. I wouldn't put Buffalo ahead of them. I think that was just a circ- a, a, a a perfect storm type of game. Not Jacksonville, huh? No, I'm I'm not there with Jackson. We're going to argue about Jacksonville later in this show. Guys, I think we will if you if you're ready for that. And, uh, and, and of course, the the most the most the NFL is unpredictable. It's so predictable. Game last week, Minnesota 31, oh, Atlanta 28. <laughs> I'll tell you, the, did we did we not say that was coming, or did we not say I, that was coming? I I know it's now Friday. I'm going to give Josh Jobs some props because what he did last weekend was incredible. Crazy. Um, for those who maybe missed it, if you're living under a rock, Josh Jobs was traded to the Vikings on Tuesday at the trade deadline because Kirk Cousins got hurt. He was not supposed to play in this game. Jaron Hall gets hurt, and he comes in the game. Now, what happens during a practice week is the starting quarterback gets all the reps. There's not a lot of reps. Right. They get all the reps. Now, maybe, maybe if the guy's super old, you give two reps to someone else. But for the most part, the starting quarterback gets all the reps. So Jaron Hall got all the reps. He gets knocked down the first quarter. In comes... Josh Dobbs, who has not played for the Vikings before, who's not played this offense before. He's on the sidelines doing the cadence with the offensive lineman, learning what the cadence is. He comes in the huddle, and he said, I had to ask players what they're doing on this specific play. Now, with, with the communication system there, you know this, the, co- the coach can talk to the quarterback up to 15 seconds mm-hmm. before the play clock. So he can say, hey, guys, you know, hey, hey we're running, all go special. Here's what every guy's doing. But there's not enough time sometimes to explain it. And he went out. And won the game and kicked ass doing so. Like, it was an incredible performance by Dobbs. He has made himself 10 years of NFL wealth for this. Like, he will play mm-hmm. forever now yep. because he is trusted in the situation. Now, is it going to go great this week against New Orleans? I don't know. But I know in that spot, he let a come from my victory not knowing his teammates' names, not knowing the snap count. Dude, so impressed by his professionalism and to figure it out. No, it, it, it was... It was great to see, and, and you're right. Like those, those backup quarterback, like 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 a like Chase Daniel, who just hangs around in the league for a long time. And you know, if you got if you got to play a game with them, you're going to be okay. And that's the thing, right? So being a backup, I've been a backup. I actually played Chase Daniel started five games. I played a game with him where he started in Kansas City in 2013. We were had clinched the wild card spot. He started Week 17 for us. Um, is like being a backup is about being reliable, right? It's like if they put you in the game, are you just gonna? do your job. It might not be perfect, right? It's not might not be perfect, but like, can you give us a winning effort? Can you go in there and not make mental mistakes? Can you move? The, and that's like what Chase Daniel has done and what Josh Jobs has done. And Josh Jobs argues is almost better than that. Right. And it, all they want from a backup is reliability. Are you accountable? Are you reliable? And Josh Jobs is doing that, man. He'll have a job forever. Are the Vikings a playoff team with him though? In the NFC probably, right? And I was going to say in the NFC with, if they beat the Saints with, this weekend, they'll have with f- that six defense wins, right? and how bad the NFC is. They'll have six wins if they win this yeah. weekend. Yeah. There are people, there are people out there that are uh, uh, pushing uh, Kevin O'Connell for uh, 
coach of the year. If they make the, they make the playoffs. And maybe even like that saying that. Josh Dobbs has a chance to win comeback player of the year, but still, I I am, <laughs> and I I was on like. Demar Hamlin died on the field. I have Demar Hamlin as comeback player of the year too. I have I I I took he, him at like minus three hundred. He whatever it was. And not only be, he not he he. he but has he played? He made a team. But has he played? He played a year? game. He's the comeback player of the year. He did, story he's, he's is played, he's played one game this year, as yeah. we know. Um, I course, don't care. I, I know. Count, I have Demar Hamlin money too. I'm with you. I, I, I have it as well. That's nothing to do with me having money on it either. Like, like <laughs> well, he, 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 he died on his heart. Stopped on the. He field. should win comeback player of the year. And he's on the roster and he's played. Correct. People have short memories. If Josh Dobbs leads the Vikings back to the playoffs. I would not be surprised if some of the votes went to Josh Dobbs. Does it make it right? Does it make it what I would do? But, I mean, I, I, I don't know. People have short memories. If, if DeMar Hamlin plays more, and he's, you know, I think maybe he has, a, again, I have money in DeMar Hamlin. She should be the winner. There's no, there's no doubt about it. He did die on the football field. Yes. Just, and he's, he's come back and he's playing. It was good to see him. Obviously, you know, Bengals and the Bills was an emotional scene for him. Uh, last week, uh, Bengals get it, get that win, which I think we both called. The Bengals are playing good football, man. They're yeah. back. They're all the way back. And we're back with wagers for Mr. Bear over here. Only two in the NFL. Shorter, shorter slate. We'll have well, our best bet in our group bet. chat in a little bit. Uh, let's start off with the game in Los Angeles. The Lions are 6-2. and two. Uh, Excuse me, the, num- the number first. Chargers are getting three points, total 48 and a half. Lions are 6-2. and two. They're well-rested after a bye. They're also 6-2 against the spread. Chargers are 4-4 four and four after a Monday Night Football win. Over the Jets, they've covered four of their eight football games. Where are you going here? I just don't. And if people have, like, a recency bias, and people remember seeing the Chargers look awful on Monday night against the Jets, which they were. Still the won were, by 21. And they, and they won. <laughs> but people love the Lions. Yeah. I, I think it just goes back to the hard knocks last year. They love Dan Campbell and the rah rah, and, and, and just I think they're good, but I don't know if they're like you look at the win Atlanta, Green Bay, Carolina, Tampa, Raiders. Yes, they did win in Kansas City the first game of the year. That game, it's an opening Thursday night yeah. game. So like like that, that stuff happens. Like I don't think this charge the Chargers are an elite team by any means. But I don't think we're to the point where they should be a home underdog to yeah. the Lions. Here's my question about this game for you. So, Lions are off a bye. Mm-hmm. Chargers play Monday Night Football mm-hmm. on the East Coast. Yep. Is there a little bit of this, like, Lions come out fast? Because I, I think Lions' first half is a decent wager here. And can, are the Chargers, can they withstand being down 14 nothing if the Chargers, I mean, if the Lions come out and blitz them off that bye? Can they, can they come back in this game? Yeah, I think they can. Okay. Yeah, because I, I I think the Lions do start fast because because they're off the bye though. It's a good coaching staff. They're, they're going to have something on offense, I think. The Lions? Yeah, the Chargers. You would think so. I mean, hopefully their offensive line will hold up against a good Chargers patch up because certainly the uh, Jets embarrassment what, of an offensive line. What is it about the Chargers? Like I just watch them play, and I'm like, it's like the sum of the sum of the parts doesn't equal like. It, it makes no sense. I want someone to be hired to help Justin Herbert out. Help my guy out. Even though I, I think there's some his he's he's playing hurt. Like he's clearly the, the a finger that's yeah. like the cast there. He can't fall. He's yeah. like fall down weird because he doesn't want to hit his finger. Yeah, that, you, you think so? All right, Let, let's get your other game before we get to Gamma Group Chat and in uh, our best bet later. Uh, Commanders plus six and a half at Seattle. Four, total is 45 and a half. Commanders are, are four and five overall. They're four, four, one against the spread. The Commanders just won and covered in New England. Seattle is five and three. They're four, three and one against the spread. Just got blown out by the Ravens, 37 to three. Where are we going here? And it wasn't that close. No, it wasn't. And, you, and usually teams that get blown out and embarrassed come back with an inspired performance. But I'm not, I, people have the, like some people have the Seahawks team like a, fringe top 10 team or maybe in the top 10 like in there like i don't see it i don't think seattle is good at all like the offensive line is bad it's led to a predictable geno smith regression off of the absolute flu completion percentage year that he had last year even the wins before the blowout i mean they they should have lost to the browns pj walker on the home field the cardinals win in arizona wasn't like inspiring like I'm I'm not there. Like 
Washington's been in in, in nearly every game that they played. Yeah. I, like a couple, couple, couple of one, one, one score losses to the Eagles easily could have beaten the Eagles. Like I'm, I think they'll hang around here as well. I, I think Hal can have success yeah. against that defense, and uh, I, I think six and a half here, even on the road, is the way to go. Sam Hal has been feisty the last couple of weeks, as we've seen. He he can put the ball down the field, which is nice. They have and they have the, the ability, especially if they're behind the games, to come back yep, because of their exactly. of their wide receivers. But your your thoughts about Seattle, I think, are spot on, right? I mean, they have not played a good month of football. Lost the Bengals in a game in the red zone. We talked about this for weeks now. Yeah. They should have won that game. Come home and barely cover against Arizona, who's not any good anymore. The Browns, they come back from high. Like PJ Walker, was all they did was scream him to death. Yep. And then they got their butts kicked last weekend. So I'm with you on the Commanders here, plus six and a half. Uh, so the two wagers so far for Bear, Chargers plus three, and the Commanders plus six and a half. We'll talk more about all the games in the, in the slate MVP odds, comeback player of the year odds, defensive player of the year. All those things that happen to do with the NFL and the gambling group chat. It's going to be Bear, Will Hill, Sammy P, and myself. Here's a group chat. Gambling group chat is back. Myself, Sammy P, Will Hill, and my co-host Jeff Schwartz here. Thumbing down the NFL slate this week. It, boy, it is, uh, it is coin flip central um, in, in a lot of these games. And I guess... The game of the week would have to be the game in Jacksonville between the, the Niners and, and the Jaguars. Looks like Debo Samuel will be back. Does not look like Trent Williams is back and kind of hints that he's a little more injured than just a little bit of a high ankle sprain. But uh, the, the Jaguar is currently a three-point home dog. I'm actually buying in. I'm hoping that the, 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 the idle week and Debo coming back and maybe Chase Young will help that Niners defense a little bit. I laid the three with the Niners. Um Will, any 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 thought on this game? Yeah, I want no part of it. You mentioned this is the best game maybe to watch, the most important game, the, the sexiest matchup. This is, the, to me, the worst game to bet. I have no feel. Like, I don't want to step in front of <laughs> San you. Francisco off, off three losses, off of a bye. I don't want to step in front of them. But uh, Jags getting three. You know, I could make a case for them. You don't have to bet every game on the board. To me, this is a pretty easy pass. Like the over in the game, I, I think you know forty-five is fair. Depending on when you listen to this, I think you could bet over forty-five. These are clearly two of the most efficient quarterbacks in the league, and I know we're going to talk about Trevor Lawrence in a little bit. But I give San Francisco's offense more of an edge off the buy because that sort of looked a little bit broken. Bear, you mentioned you know the injuries; they haven't had Trent or Debo for a while. But I think the correctables in San Francisco are offensively and not defensively. Um, and then you look at the way that this number opened, like right over 40, 44, it opened 44 and a half, like not 44, 44 and a half got hit the 45. And I think this could keep running. So I do think we get some points here and, and I like Lawrence and Purdy to both, you know, get several touchdowns. We'll debate this game in a few minutes, me and you, but I just say, I think people are sleeping on how good Jacksonville actually is. They're obviously six and two. They're off a of bye as well, guys. Doug Peterson has done well as a coach off a of bye. So they have the same sort of prep time that San Francisco does. I think the Jags have played 19, 20 straight games, right? And, and they've lost five and three against Kansas City. Like, they, they're winning a lot of their football games. They're a good football team. Uh, and I think that we're discounting Jacksonville here. I was shocked to see them getting three points this game. I think they're just as good as San Francisco, and I have no problem taking them off a of bye. You think they are just as good as San Francisco? Interesting. We're they're good, man. All They, they just can you know, win football games all well, the time. Well, <laughs> we're discounting them because they're in Jacksonville and they're in the AFC South. Well, if they are th this good and they do win this week, one of the, one of the one of the viewers, listeners chimed in on Trevor Lawrence potentially to to be the MVP. I mean, we talked about Joe Burrow last week and the previous week. Like, let's get ahead of that. But random question for us and the gambling group chat. Yeah. Hear me out. Trevor Lawrence for MVP has to be bet this week, right? Second in the AFC, no quarterback really running away with it, just outside the top 10 and all the passing sets. So like, you got Hurts, Mahomes, and Lamar all right there at the top in terms of like the, the, the favorites slash co-favorites for the award. Like, I guess he's got a point. Like, if you're going to bet Lawrence, you kind of have to do it this week, right, guys? If they you know. win, he could go to 10-1. to 1. I mean, depending on how he plays, right? I mean, if he goes out and throws for – 350, three touchdowns, and Jacksonville wins, those odds could get cut in half for sure. I mean, I guess, it, let me just say this. If you like the bet, like whoever tweeted that out, 
bet it. <laughs> you know, like clearly, clearly you're onto it. You you like that Jacksonville has a nice little path here to win this game, and clearly they do. Um, my only, you know, advice would be if they lose, this thing is dead. You know, he's not winning it if they don't win this game. Yeah, I think the key thing in that tweet is nobody's pulled away. It's a wide open race. It's going to be determined in the second half of the year. Um, you know, Lamar, he he's had injury issues. Mahomes doesn't have the great weapons around him. You can always give it to Mahomes. He won it last year, so there's some fatigue there. Uh, Hertz has been good. I don't think he's been great. So yeah, it's wide open. Lawrence, you mentioned Burrow last week at twenty to one. I, I'm I'm kicking myself for missing that because that's down to seven to one, nine to one in some spots. So you also don't want to get in the habit. Like it, it depends. I would say it depends what you've already bet. You don't want to, oh, I'm going to bet this guy this week. And you end up with like, you know, seven or eight guys, you betting somebody different every week. But if you have nothing <laughs> in pocket, like I, I could certainly make a case Lawrence at 20 to one. It's not like it's a, you know, it's a donation or anything. It, it certainly has a chance Two has definitely come back to the pack. I'd have a hard time seeing him win the award. So yeah, it's wide open. I do. I agree. So I don't even know if he's the most valuable player on his own team. I think that's the that, that, that's an issue right there, Jeff. You, I just think that if you look at Trevor Lawrence, is he going to end up being better this season than the rest of the the quarterbacks in the AFC conference? Right, Mahomes, who we know that look, I trust the Chiefs eventually to start playing better on offense. You know, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. Like, is is Trevor Lawrence at some point? Is Jacksonville at some point going to be? the first or second or third seed in the AFC to where he's going to win that. He's not going to win the MVP as the fourth seed in the AFC conference, right? So that's to be considered in this as well. I would, I would, I would agree with that as well. We, we look, one, one thing we've kicked around a lot for whether it's right or wrong and maybe people are ad nauseum with, but like the Cardinals, why, why are we talking about the, the Arizona Cardinals? But like, does Kyler Murray being back really move the needle for you? You could still get, under three and a half wins at plus money out there. Like, Will, are they really going to win three games over the course of the rest of the season, even if Kyler Murray on this terrible team is is the quarterback? Like, it, it, for me, like, if Clayton Toon was quarterback, they weren't winning another game. But does Kyler Murray coming back mean they're going to win three more? Isn't under three and a half at plus money still a pretty good bet? I sure as hell hope they don't win three more because I am I am invested <laughs> on the under here. I, I'm nervous that he brought him back. I I... I would bet the under, I wouldn't bet the over again. This is one where I, I've already bet plenty on it. So I'm, I'm not going to bet more. I don't get like to the bigger point though. I don't get what the point of this is. You're going to win an extra game or two and knock yourself out of the running for the number one pick. And then you're going to be picking maybe, I don't know, third where you can't draft a quarterback. I, I just don't get this one foot in one foot out. It seemed like this was just a blatant tank. They're trading guys left and right. It's a terrible team. And you know, halfway through the season, all right, here comes Murray. He's ready to play. This is very surprising to me. I don't really understand what, what the point of this is. Yeah, this is like organizational malpractice. Like yes. you've done basically halfway through the season, you've done your job. You are what one and eight through nine games. And now you want to bring the quarterback that actually gives you a chance to win games. You want to bring him back right now. So you might win three or four. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You are so close to a number one or number two pick. And now you want to bring Kyler back. It doesn't make any sense to me, but then again, We've seen stupider stuff in this league, that's for sure. <laughs> I agree with you guys about this. I just think from the Arizona perspective, here's what they're thinking. I'll tell you what they're thinking. One is that maybe that contract is untradeable, right? So if they bring in a young quarterback, Murray has to be there for one or two more years anyway. So what's the point of taking a quarterback at number one who can't play for a couple of years or he plays and then you have a disgruntled Kyler Murray sitting behind him? That, that's one possibility. The other one is that you have a new head coach there, obviously in Gannon, and he wants to see Kyler Murray play. He wants to evaluate Kyler Murray for himself before deciding whether or not to move on. But again, if you win too many games, I think you say to yourself, well, he's our guy, but he's obviously not better, in my opinion, than Drake May or Caleb Wood. Williams, then you lost yourself out on a on a on, on a you know on a franchise elite transcending talent in in Mayor Williams. So I think it's a lose lose for the Cardinals. If you win enough games where Kyler Murray's your guy, I don't think he's better than those two guys. And you know if you if you win one or two games, you realize he's Kyler Murray's not your guy. Then you're not in a position to draft one of these guys next season. So from that perspective, I, I don't really understand what they're doing. They're not thinking ahead, which has cost a lot of teams the ability to draft game changing quarterbacks. And, and God forbid he gets hurt. And they owe him what? What is it? Sixty million dollars or whatever, something like yeah, that. If, like, I got, like I, I get it, but 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 I don't. So that being said, who's who's hopping on board to lay a point and a half with the Falcons this week? <laughs> Man, that team drives me nuts. I need them over eight and a half. 
I, I mean, I need nine wins. And, you know, you can make a case that, you know, in the four games that have been decided in the final, you know, five minutes or whatever, they could be 4-0 or they could be 0-4. Um, I'd, I'd love to know for sure if Drake London was in. I think he's going to play. Uh, the receiver missed last week. I think he's going to be back. But, man, that Arthur Smith is maddening. And, you know, that was like the sexiest name in Vegas going into the season for coach of the year. And he has done nothing but – like hinder that offense inside the red zone. It's it's maddening. So I need him to win, but I'm not betting that crap. No way. <laughs> they were so good during the summer too. That was everybody's favorite team. And, and look, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. I know Barrett, you and I didn't kind of buy in. Like everyone loved the Falcons. Like is Desmond Ritter's not still the quarterback. I know you know they got talent. I know the schedule was easy, but that's one where I just I didn't get that that in the Green Bay love over the summer. Sometimes I don't know if it's group think. I don't know. Maybe it's just people that they have an opinion. Look, I, not like I get everything right, but I, that that was one that surprised me all summer. Everyone yeah, loved sure you that number got bet up and up and up. It, it's it's crazy. The the reason why is people get bored continually mentioning the teams they like as the same teams each year. It's boring to say yeah. I like the Eagles or 49ers, right? You try to find I think yourself. The Chiefs will be good. The right, Falcons right. love. Yeah, but but I will say, that, guys, it, to me the preseason is very simple. Who's your quarterback, right? It was it's it was Desmond Ritter. Now it's Heineke. Maybe they go back to Ritter at some point. That's why I wasn't on the Falcons. Like you have a bad quarterback, yeah. I'm not going to be on your team winning a lot of games this season. Maybe they look to the NFC South and they look Derek Carr. To look, I, I think all four of us are high on Derek Carr, but he's better than what Atlanta has. Obviously the Panthers. I was wrong about them. I thought that'd be much better. And then Tampa Bay with with Baker Mayfield. So many people looked at Atlanta and thought, hey, this is our chance to take Atlanta. They have some good weapons around Ritter, but obviously. He's not good. Arthur Smith is not a good head coach right now. Yeah, I, I think I think Heineke has like a an expiration label on him, where ultimately he'll be put to the sideline again. And then he's a backup bear. He's he, he's he's, a, yeah. he's up and down. That's mm -hmm. that's why backups don't get starting jobs. They're not consistent. I right? think we can all agree that the Falcons' quarterback in 2024 is currently not on the roster. The starting quarterback. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would think that's the case. I could tell you what I thought. Sammy, though. I mean, just to counter, just to counter what Will said quickly, like with the whole, you know, Atlanta situation. Like I did this last year with the Giants because I believed in Brian Dable. It wasn't so much a belief in Daniel Jones. I just thought Brian Dable was going to figure everything out, and he did last year. And they have regressed completely this year. So I think it was <laughs> it was more belief in the coach and the system than it was in the quarterback because I I didn't bet the over on the Giants last year because I love Daniel Jones. I, right. I bought the hype on the coach. I was right last year. I was wrong this year. I've, you know, I'm glad you said the Giants because I've looked all over because I would love to play like an under two and a half win total on the Giants because with Tom, they're, they're not winning another game this year. Like, and and I've, I've looked around a couple of books and there are no updated win totals uh, for the Giants. Uh, for the, I mean, I'm sure maybe in some other other areas throughout the country that you can get it under a, 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 a a win total, but I know the the couple that I have access to in Connecticut, like there's nothing up. But like, who 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 are, who are they beating? They're, they're the rest of the year, will they don't play Brown, do they? Sammy's team. I mean, I I don't know. What, <laughs> no, they're not winning. Nothing. They, don't, they don't play. They don't play USC. They don't play USC either. No, it's uh, it's it's going to be probably be the best thing for him. It's funny. It, it's sort of ironic where Giants fans have defended Daniel Jones. Hey, he's our franchise quarterback. He's our guy. Him not playing well, him getting hurt is going to sort of back into one of these franchise guys. I don't know if they'll get the first pick. They got a shot. They'll probably get the second pick because two wins. Like if Arizona is going to play Murray, which it seems like they are, they're probably going to get a second, maybe a third win. Carolina is probably going to back luck into another win. Who knows? By the time people listen to this, maybe they have a second win. So the Giants are going to be right there for the first, if not like the second pick. They're, they're right there. Do you have a ticket on them for have the worst record in the league? I can't remember if you played that or not or in the summer. Sore subject. I was actually doing a show during the summer and we were talking about who's a sleeper to get the first pick. And I suggested the Giants 30 to one. And I got snickered at. I got mocked. I didn't bet it because Arizona started doing their tanking thing. And I was like, I, I did play a bunch of unders and all unders. I didn't play. Uh, I did not play worst record. There's still plus 330 out there if you want to play it. You're probably looking at like a dead heat situation. I, I, I would imagine they tie somebody with two, but they're very live to get this, I think. Their team total this weekend is 10 and a half. Is it like under. two trying to take the under there? Like how how they they're how, not going to score? Tommy how they, DeVito? How are they scoring two touchdowns? And, and and the Cowboys, by the way, defensively, this is their jam, right? When they get up in a game like this, they rush Front the passer yep. and they terrorize quarterbacks. Like they're, they're super. Like I I would say sixteen and a half, seventeen right now for Dallas. Like I I I'm not going to bet it probably, but like they're going to win this game. 
by a ton of points because they're front runners. Like this is what they do, right? They get up big and they steamroll teams once they get up big. They beat them 40 to nothing in the open. And they even, yeah. yeah, but the thing about that game that I look back on and think, okay, special teams touchdown, defense touchdown, like even if those two things don't happen, they would cover the spread of this weekend's game. But but here here's the thing. You, you talk, I think was it Will just said like Giants forty to nothing, Jets thirty to ten, Patriots thirty eight three, Rams forty three twenty. Like when they get a bad yeah, team they, down, shoo, like like rocket ship. Any anything seventeen or under, you're laying, aren't you, Sammy? I don't know. I probably won't get involved. I mean, I I hate these big numbers. I you know the problem is like the back door never really closes sometimes. You know, and it's. 21 to three and they pull Dak and you know, the offensive linemen are all sitting on the bench with towels around their heads and you're sweating minus 17 as the giants come charging to the 30 and then they kick a field goal or something <laughs> stupid. And lose by 50. You know, I just, I've lived that nightmare, man. I ain't doing that. It ain't happening. <laughs> Jeff, doesn't this feel like a Brian St. Pierre game? Remember uh, we, we talked about this game in the past. I mean, sometimes you just get a quarterback who doesn't belong a quarterback who shouldn't be in the NFL. This reminds me, if people don't remember, I think it was what 2010, you guys signed Brayton, Brian yes. St. Pierre three days before a game. And he threw a couple plate pick sixes. This is to me, this is a similar game with DeVito where he just, he, you don't want to be too harsh, but he just, he probably doesn't belong on an NFL field to be honest. Do you know how many times I, I, I think, used to like hide under the covers when the announcer would go, here comes Josh McCown. I'd be like, Oh, oh. Shit, here he comes again. <laughs> like, like that's the worst, the worst. The Giants, by the way, activated Matt Barkley to be the backup this weekend. Did I see Jacob oh, Eason is on a roster now too? Yes. So like it's it's a Tommy DeVito, Matt Barkley Giants game on the road in Dallas. All right, I need to go sports radio, sports yes. talk radio on here for a second because I, I want to get and maybe even Will and Sammy, you can chime in as well afterwards. But everyone talks about how awful the quarterback play is in the league. I want to know why. Why do we have guys that should be on a, on an XFL roster like? on an NFL roster seeing game time. Like why does a quarter like yeah. quarterback well, play is terrible. And you hear about in, in, in the developmental stage, all oh, with the elite 11 and all these quarterback camps and private quarterback coaches, oh, quarterback play has never been better. It stinks. But why, why are these quarterbacks yeah. so bad? Well, in the, NFL? the easy answer is obviously injuries, right? There's a lot of guys hurt, but also too, like the, the, the teams that have cycled out these older quarterbacks, these hall of fame type quarterbacks, have never really added anyone else. I mean, look, the, the Packers, Jordan Love is not that guy, right? Kenny Pickett's not that guy so far in Pittsburgh. So like some of these the, these teams have had quarterbacks for so many years. You know, Daniel Jones is not Eli Manning. Like all these guys that have sort of cycled out have not been replaced by someone else. And so that's 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 why, Bear, is that the quarterback play is guys are injured and the young players just haven't developed now. I was going to say, is it something that's going on? Well, there's less practice time. This is, this is why, look, when the lack of development, especially for offensive linemen, is lack of practice time, right? We don't practice anymore. I'm not saying you have to go back to two a days, but you did get more reps. And if you're a young player, you got better because you got the more reps. Now guys are not practicing as much. They're not in the facility as much. I know I'm an old guy on my soapbox right now about this stuff, but that's part of it, right, Bears? You don't have the ability to practice as much anymore and get better with your teammates because you don't practice as often. So you either come in the NFL and you're really good right away, like 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 uh, CJ Stroud is, like, boom, he's good right now. We know he's good. Whatever happens the rest of his career, I think he's a good football player. It, and sometimes it just takes time to, to, to get things going with a guy like Bryce Young, but maybe Bryce Young is just not the dude. And so... Those are those, all those combinations together are leading us to a point where, um, you know, the quarterback and even guys that are good, good, like Mahomes, is not playing as well this season. So I think everything's just sort of happened all this year. My only observation would be we've had a lot of empty drafts. I mean, you think back to 2015, Mariota and Winston go one and two. Those guys aren't, you know, st even starters. 2014 was what was uh, Bortles, was Manziel, Bridgewater. Those are guys that would be coming into their prime. 2016, Goff and Wentz. Goff's okay. Wentz is, you know, just signed with the Rams. Even 2021, those guys, <laughs> uh, Lance, Fields, Wilson. I, that doesn't get to the why. I don't, I don't get the disconnect between the college. Maybe there's a disconnect between the college game and the NFL game. It's not getting to why, but a, a lot of whiffs in these drafts, which is like these guys would be coming into their prime right now in their prime. It, it it really is just just from, from, from a from I think from a schematic perspective, like college the NFL, you know, like again with the practice stuff. So like in college, a lot of the time you're reading like just half a field, right? Like you just look to one side of the field. If a guy's there, you throw it. If not, you you throw it away or you run the ball. You RPO it. In the NFL, obviously, you're doing full field reads. I, I think it's one reason why Stroud is so good at Ohio State. He sort of had to read the whole field in the offense at times, and like 
guys in college, they're being drafted off traits, not off production a lot of times, get to the NFL, and you have to like learn to read a real defense. And everyone has traits in the NFL. That's why they're in the NFL. And those physical tools you have don't overcome your lack of ability to read a defense. I think that's part of the quarterback issues right now. That's the answer I want. And I heard, I heard Mike Pritchard actually give a similar type of answer on uh, on on Visa the other day about how the the hashes the wide splits in in college as opposed to oh, it's so easy. having to do a lot to do with reading running one side of the field and well it's so easy because the hash not we'll get nerdy for a second if you guys want like the yeah, hash yes marks, yes okay talk so, dirty to me so the the hash marks in, in college are obviously wider right so if you're on one hash and you have the entire field in front of you to the other side the the defense has to show its hand if it's going to move at all right because the safety has got to get somewhere a long way to go to the middle of the field if he's on one hash, right? So, guys, you show that the, the defense is so much easier in college. In the NFL, with the hash is so close and the ball is much closer and everyone's much closer to each other, you can't, you know, you don't, have, you can disguise coverages. Like, I got in college, I could be his offensive lineman and look at safeties and see, like, oh, okay, well, that guy's way over here. They're bringing pressure from this side. In the NFL, it's much harder to see. And that's part of the reason why. And again, the one read thing is real in college. Like, there are teams that just give their quarterbacks yep. one one read. I want you to read just this guy right here. Um, and, other, and other schools are more complicated like that. And so I think that's a big reason why. Like, that's not to get draft weedy, but like Bo Nix, for example, at Oregon. I know he's older and blah, blah. They actually make him read the field. Like, he has a pro style passing game. Lamar Jackson had a pro style passing. I think that's why, like, these guys from college to the NFL are good. Like, if you can have a pro style pass game in college, it really helps you w- when you get to the NFL. And I think that's part of the reason why, moving forward, people are talking about maybe being a little more confident that JJ McCarthy or Drake may may pan out more than Caleb Williams. Williams. So, so yeah. we'll see. Two of those quarterbacks we mentioned: uh, Jordan Love, Kenny Pickett, and eh, oh. jury out. They face each other this week in Pittsburgh. Steelers seem to be a very popular pick laying three here against Green Bay. Like, say, Sammy, can you feel confident with that offense? Like, as awful as Green Bay is, like, like, can you lay three with Steelers here? Not only have they been outgained in every game, I mean, they've been outscored by 30 points. They have a minus 30 net, which is, I guess we just give Mike Tomlin his – his hat tip. I mean, the guy again has done an incredible job and and that defense really inside the red zone, that defense shuts almost everything down. I mean, teams can move the ball against Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh just doesn't allow you to, to break the goal line. So it's probably a game that I'd go under there 39. I'm I'm not laying three with Pittsburgh, but I don't love green Bay. I was actually going to power rate the three games that I hate the most. That's probably number one. (laughs) With uh, with Green Bay and Pittsburgh, number two is Minshew and Mac Jones in Germany. <laughs> you think I'm that? <laughs> and then number three might be Derek Carr is a favorite against Josh Dobbs. I just <sighs> I don't want to do it. Will I don't want to do it with any of them. Bear, there is a three and a half in Connecticut, a book you and I have, uh, tend to frequent. Uh, three and a half, it's juiced on the Packers. I, I'm tempted to take the three and a half. I have no appetite for laying points with this Steeler team. I mean, if they win, which they probably will, it'd probably be another you know, 20 to 17 type of game. So plus three and a half, I know we, we talk about it all the time. Some of these bets that, that are the best ones to make, you just have to plug your nose and they're, and they're not pretty. They're not fun to root for, but I don't know. Plus three and a half is, is probably going to end up in my account uh, some point over the next couple of days. And if you do like the Steelers to win, however, though, uh, to me, Tomlin, 22 to one coach of the year is, is mispriced because like Sammy said, he's almost the star of the team. You talk about the Steelers. The first thing people say is, oh, Tomlin, look at the great job he's done. He's never won this award. So there's a lifetime achievement award possibility here. And I don't know if anyone's run away with this award. Campbell's the favorite. I guess he's the rightful favorite. But again, they were minus money to win the division. That's usually not how you win this award. You usually win this award by overachieving the Brian Dable, you know, getting something out of nothing. So if they sneak into the playoffs and they're plus 140 to make the playoffs, to me, uh, you don't bet him plus 140 to make the playoffs. You take Tomlin, 22 to one coach of the year. I think he's very live to win this award i think this number will be if they win this number will be 10 to 1 8 to 1 maybe shorter this time next week jeff you're nodding um yeah i think that that's the way to play this game but can i offer one other ugly game guys that I, I think you sort of um i feel like we have to fade the raiders this week but they're playing the jets and that's a huge problem for me like the raiders this this new coach bounces great and all but they're not still not good right like we we agree on that i mean the jets aren't very good either but you have to fade the raiders this week in an ugly game 
Am I wrong? For I was. That? I was. Just, I. I thought this was going to for sure be Sammy's, Sammy's list, yes. power, power rankings of games, the ugliest games of the week. Me too. I, I, I'll be on the Jets. You have to fade one. the Raiders. I right? have no fear. No, yeah. I'm on the Jets here. I took Jets. Okay. Okay. Good. I feel better about. I'm going to take them this week for my contest. Like I just, I'm fading the Raiders. I, I wish they played a better team to fade, but I'm fading the, that that new coach bounce. We saw it last year with Jeff Saturday, right? I think Pierce has done more coaching right. than Jeff Saturday. Yeah, exactly. He's coached more, so I, I do give him credit for that. Jeff Saturday was on was where we were doing, and then the next day he was the Colts coach. Pierce has been in buildings coaching for a long time now, but they're still not a good football team. And they had this massive win. They're 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 treating like this win in the, in the locker room like they just won the Super Bowl. Cigars party, which I I love. I, it's great they did that. But, you know, now you're playing a Jets defense that's very good, obviously. Unfortunately, their offense is, is tough to watch. But this feels like a prime spot to 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 fade a Raiders team on the, off that new coach bounce. Yeah, in the, in the year of our Lord, 2023, we have a coach saying that the heartbeat of our team is running the football. We're like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is a, a throwing league where guys like Allen and Mahomes and Burrow and Hurts and even Lamar Jackson – is passing more. And I, I think it was a great win. Clearly the team sort of rallied around Antonio Pierce. It's like the old uh, Patrick Ewing theory bear. When you lose a big piece, yeah. or you lose something, yep. you lose a coach, coach gets fired. That team somehow finds a way, but I mean, the jets are still power rated much higher to me than the Raiders. It's just, it's that perception thing that the jets looked horrible on Monday night football and, and nobody wants to go. That's the last game we watched in the NFL. Well, not counting Thursday night, of course, between the Bears and Panthers, but the, the Jets are going to be the really smelly team that a lot of wise guys will bet. So I, I'm just, that's the way it is. And, and as yeah, bad as the year. Jets were on Sunday night, go ahead. You look sorry. Well, go ahead. No, I was just saying, remember last year, Jeff Saturday takes over for the Colts. They win a game. Oh man, it's a different approach. This is going to work. And I, I don't think they won another game. <laughs> so um, it would be Jets or nothing. I think their defense is probably the best unit of, of the four units, but Twice in six days, we get Zach Wilson in prime time. If you guys want to troll bear, if you want to get under his skin, just tweet at him that, hey, Zach Wilson's looking good. That was a good throw. He's starting to turn the corner because nothing gets bear more fired up than, than Zach Wilson praise. It's just one of his little pet peeves. So you guys should tweet. I, at I him actually him. felt bad. I felt bad for him on on, on Monday night. I, I, they all, yeah. it, it didn't matter who was they, that offensive line was, was so bad. bad. Like, like he had no chance. I'm like, he's not good. But 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 that was not all on him on, on, on Monday night, but I mean, it, how as bad as the jets were, the chargers were probably worse. Oh. Like their offense was inept. And here I am, I'm taking three at home again against the lions. And it, yeah. Um, the chargers are to me, they just need a, a new everything. approach to everything. <laughs> I don't know who the coach is going to be next year. I don't think it can be Staley, even they the playoffs. So you, they're just stale right now, right? Everything about the program, the program, the franchise, it just feels stale. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe it's Jim Harbaugh, and you have you bring him in. You kind of obviously get tougher, revamp the offense. We we see what Harbaugh we see what Harbaugh's done to quarterbacks over his career. But you, you got to you, you need a new approach. It's, it's not it's working. You're winning because you have a lot of good football players, but you're not winning the way you should be winning with the players you have. And so you know this weekend, as, as you mentioned, the Chargers. I mean, look, the Lions off a of bye. Uh, Chargers on a short week. I like the Lions to cover the first half, I think, but I think the Chargers getting three points. I mean, I guess. I just, way too the Chargers to me always, I, I can't stomach it sometimes, Bear. But but Sammy, they've actually had, I think, what, three straight weeks now where the game has been decided well before the final two minutes of the game. So I think we're due for one of those, like, field goal nail biters at the end of the game, right? Get, get back to Chargers football. This will be, yeah, this will be 28, 27, either way. I'm going to call my shot right now. This is going to be one of those games, but I, I think, you know, we knock Staley all the time. I, I'm watching and again. I have jets plus three on Monday and they're up 11 Los Angeles. There's like a minute left to go. All you do is run the ball, go to the halftime up 14 to three. They're throwing the ball on first and second down. And then I think they threw it on third down. So then you give the Jets the ball back with a minute to go. Now, granted, it worked out because the Jets were horrible. But, like, nobody does that. You you go to the lead. You don't want to give the home team any momentum. You go to the locker room up 14-3. to three, And this idiot is throwing the ball with a minute to go. The Jets, the Jets got the ball back with, like, 50 seconds and two timeouts. They didn't do anything with it. But that's just – that's such bad coaching, guys. It's so bad. Well, accused him of being a good coach. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. 
What, 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 what games haven't we haven't we uh, what, on here? It's, are, are the Browns are, is, is six points too much to to for the Ravens to be favored over the Browns? The Browns are a good football team. So is Baltimore. Offense, I get it. Losing Wills this week hurts their offensive line. I know, line big time. but six feels like a lot, doesn't it? For a defense that's it, good and a run game that the Browns can run the ball, it does. But I, I don't know if I want to get in front of this Ravens train right now. Will do you? No, it would be Ravens or nothing. I think I'm actually going to bet the Ravens. I still don't believe in like, Watson. Is still one of the bigger stories in the league. Like this idea, oh, he's rusty. It's the time off. It's it's just always something. I, I know they won last week. The numbers were okay. He still does not look like the same player. And if you're going to put him outdoors against a good defense, uh, to me, I think the Ravens are going to win this game and win them comfortably. I know some of like the DVOA stats, some of the advanced stuff, love this Ravens team. They could they could you know easily be undefeated right yeah. now. Their their losses were sort of fluky. So uh, I kind of like the Ravens here. DVOA, I think, has the Ravens like the third best DVOA through nine yeah. weeks. Like some some right. insane number, which by the way, you know, DVOA is and I love them, obviously. They they've had the Ravens high for years now, right? I mean, they, they've had some incredible yeah. starts where they put the Ravens super high. And then obviously, as we as more games get played, they kind of come back down to earth. But yeah, Baltimore's playing great football. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I'm not laying it, I'm not uh, taking the points with Browns. I was just curious about your opinion on this game. We would the the one game where I think it might be too many this this week. Is Houston Cincinnati? I, I, I know you're gonna you, you could talk me. You could talk me into taking Houston plus seven, especially if Higgins and Chaser, I guess, haven't been practicing. No, haven't. Like at some point, the Bengals are going to have a game where they just kind of go through the motions, and maybe after the last couple of weeks where they've been uh, fa- facing opponents that they've absolutely wanted to, to the, the big game against the Bills. Like th- this feels like a spot where maybe taking the seven with, with, with the Houston offense and uh, the, the CJ Stroud, the rookie of the year. Uh, and and you, you mentioned uh, Tomlin for coach of the year. Like D'Amico Ryans, I think, would be someone as well and, and uh, to, to maybe be coach of the year. But I think, well, as you said as well in, the, in that text, like they probably have to make the playoffs in order for sure. for him to win it. it Sa- Sammy, can you can you get behind uh, Houston plus seven or do you, you have a feel on the total in this game? I was actually going to say, take that seven now, buddy, because it's coming off. You know, there's a lot of six and a half now in the market. There's a lot of sharp respect for Houston. Um, You know, I'm looking six and a half at a lot of shops offshore, six and a half. There's a couple sevens left, but this opened eight and a half. So we've we've clearly seen the respect uh, on the Texan side of things. I'd probably I'd probably lay six and a half, though, just just because I feel like seven is fair. Like I, I wouldn't, wouldn't lay seven. Um, I will say this, this is going to be one of the toughest weeks. You know, a lot of us are in these contests. We need five picks ATS. Mm. I'm at like two and a half out of five. So I, I gotta find, <laughs> I gotta find two and a half more. And I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I, I haven't had many weeks like this. I know I'm going to play the jets. I'm probably going to play the chargers plus three. Eight and up. then from there, it's like, God, there, there are so many point. Fl- no, not happening. This is one of the, the worst weeks. One of the worst weeks. Car on the road? Five. No, no. Nah. I, I was just going to say, this is such a trap spot. You hinted at it. They, they beat the Bills last week. They play at Baltimore next Thursday night. So this is a, a sandwich spot. Ooh. Boy, that's a hell of a Thursday night game in Baltimore next week. So this has all the makings of a you know, close game late and, and a little bit of a, a letdown spot here for Cincy. Yeah, this, this is – Yeah, I, I didn't even realize that. And I'm, gl- I'm glad you mentioned that about the uh, short week and the big game next week. Any, any other games out there that we, we want to – whether a future play, a, anything with any of these games? I think we covered it from my end. No, I mean, good teaser week. If you're into the teasing, a lot of these one and a half, two and a half games, you don't want to just pick who's going to win. And look, it's sometimes it's a little mechanical, a little boring to give out in terms of content. These two team teasers. I don't know how many people play them, but I I, I don't know how you feel, Sammy. To me, that's the best way to play these these games sometime in this league where the games are close. The games are low scoring and you go up to seven and a half, you go up to eight and a half with these dogs. And that's just that that's a good approach, I think. Yeah, I think maybe the perfect teaser leg for me, I'll speak for myself. I'm not going to say it's perfect for everybody, but I, I think the one game we haven't talked about is is Monday night. That's Buffalo at home as a seven and a half point favorite. You can tease piece that thing down to one and a half. I, I, I feel like we all have to understand that Buffalo eventually is going to beat somebody 45 to 10. Like it's going to happen eventually. They are just, they are so weird right now. They have the talent. We know that they have a quarterback who has potential 
there's there's that 45-10 game coming for them. I'm not saying they're going to win the AFC or the Super Bowl, but they're going to ragdoll some bad team. And it, it might be Monday, but I, to your point, I'd rather put them down to one and a half and lay seven and a half. But that might, you know what? I think I just talked myself into Buffalo. Look at that. I'm at three and a half. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could always do the route where you just you just fade people that you see on the internet post their picks this weekend. That's one that's one of my favorite things to do. I just look and say, oh, there I'm not on much this weekend, but someone else is on a lot. I'll take the other side and just and hope for the best. That's a good way to go, right, guys? You fade my a good mush. This year. A good mush is sometimes better than a good sharp. Like a yep. good mush is completely underrated. What's the technique? It's like in karate when you use somebody's body weight against themselves. That's a, I like that approach. That's a good one, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, know, knowing knowing who to bet against yes. or, or avoid, I think is even more valuable. Like like, like there, there's certain people out there. Like if I see name someone them. on, on like, I will them. want no part. Of, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that because, like I said, my college football fix has sucked this year in, in in the column. So I mean, hopefully people are fading me there, and they'd be up a a, a pretty good chunk, but. I mean, the, the bartender, for instance, I, I see him on, on a game. I want, maybe I won't necessarily play the opposite side of who the bartender's got, but I sure as hell won't play the team the bartender has. That's for sure. Yeah. I think, I think the new poll question is, is it harder to win 35% or 65%? I don't know. I don't know which one's harder. <laughs> well, I, I, I know something that, that, that I feel very passionate about here and it's, it's kind of, and sticking in my crawl, like People Magazine this week named Jason Kelsey one of the more sexiest men alive. Yeah, good. I don't know where People Magazine has been in the past, but there's another former offensive lineman here that I think they really missed the opportunity for. To to, to name, I mean, who wouldn't want that <laughs> hunk right there wearing seventy six on the left side of that? I mean, oh, I like that. I mean, that is. You chose a good picture of me, too. I mean, yeah. th that is just a beautiful man and, and, on, on that side. And, I mean, Will's going to vote for me because I'm in a Vikings uniform. I think yes, we're at Seattle I, in that game. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What year was that? I mean, I, I'm good. 2012. I am good looking. I'm not going to lie. You are. How look, do you look, know I'm, what I'm, game I'm, that is? Because I have that picture at home, I think, on my phone or something. Oh. Um because I, I, yeah, that's a picture like that's on the internet. So I just saved it. There's not a lot of pictures of me. So I just saved the picture. I mean, yeah, that's, it's, it's pretty good looking. You got a guy like a Zach was Wilson. A, was that a Christian that Ponder game? game? Yeah, I think, yeah. Christian. And we rushed, Adrian Peterson had like 250 yards that game. First play of the game, he rushed for like 78 <laughs> yards. So, uh, uh, 75 yards, something like that. It's crazy. Now, Sammy, Sammy laughs to me when I remember all this NFL stuff. I just, yeah, I remember, I love it. I remember certain plays. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. In Seattle. Yeah. Did you win? Uh, no, I've never wanted, I'm over three, over three in Seattle. I want to say Seattle's a hard place to play, man. It is loud there. It's always oh, to be well, fair. Oh, it's a nondescript picture yes. of you looking up into the sky and you're like, Oh yeah, that's in Seattle. Like, how do you know that's in Seattle? Cause I say, I, I, I have that picture on my phone. That's why I know what game it's from. <laughs> that's why it's on my Facebook or something. Um, People magazine missed the opportunity. They, they did miss the opportunity. Yeah. How about Kelsey though? What a come up for him. He just was a center two years ago. Now he's like a world famous offensive lineman. I, I sense like this little rivalry going here. I want, I mean, you got Travis Kelsey there and you got Jay, Jay in, in, in Taylor Swift as well. Yeah. And like, I want a battle royale. I, I don't want thing. I will take Mitch and Jeff Schwartz to the cooking <laughs> show over yes. the Kelsey brothers for sure. That th My brother would win that show. I've asked my brother for years for a podcast. He will not do it. So we've tried my best. I've tried to get him on a podcast. I've tried being like, dude, we're going to have a good podcast. I'm telling you, he just won't do it with me. I've tried. Tried my best. We gave you a podcast. I, I love it. Yeah. It's, it's much better than doing one about, about cooking with my brother. Can we get a battle royale? We, 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 yeah, let's do it. Let's tag team. Sign, Kelsey, sign Kelsey's versus Schwartz. In a cooking battle or just a No, just a get squared circle. Gorilla Monsoon style. Let's do it. Wrestling tights, singlets. I'm in. Beautiful. But Taylor has to be there. Otherwise, my wife won't show up. <laughs> <laughs> but but she does know Brittany, she does know Brittany Mahomes' first name, though, now, right? Yes, she knows, she, yeah, she knows Patrick's wife's first name only because of that reason. Yeah, because Taylor Swift. Did we find out? Was she in London this week? I don't care. <laughs> Germany? Is it Germany? It doesn't bother. Look, yeah, it was, it was Germany. Sa right, yeah. Sammy's so tuned out. He doesn't even have any. He has no dog in this fight. Will at least has daughters that are like Taylor Swift. So he knows he knows the battle, at least. I was actually making a price on the Swartzes and the Kelseys in my head. And I, think <laughs> I, think, I think, I mean, I've I've seen Jeff. Like, Jeff could hold me in his hand, and I'm 6'2", 220. Jeff could pick me up with his hand. 
So I'm going to say Schwartz is minus a dollar sixty. I like it. Yeah, because I, I think the Schwartz we would probably get a little now that they're both retired and out of the league. I, I think they get, might get a little dirty in there, maybe some some elbows and some fingers in the eyes and stuff. Whereas I think there's still a little bit of sense of professionalism with the Kelseys being that they're both both still playing there. I like that. I like that angle. You like, yeah. like, the, you like yeah. that handicap? And, and we'd have to win early because we're way out of shape, Mitch and I. <laughs> they would be better shaped than us. So we have to go under. dirty, fast. Yeah, w- one round max. Un- 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 under one. Under one, There yes. we go. <laughs> I think that's the best handicap we're going to get all week. All right, guys. Hopefully we can uh, have a good week in the, in the NFL on what, what appears to be a particularly gross week of games. Until next week, talk soon. I don't care what People Magazine says. You are a sex symbol. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I zoot sexiness. I understand. Yeah. It's hard for you to even to, it, to verbalize it. I was going to say, hey, for me to for me to be able to come in here every every Thursday and just spend time with you, I feel. I, I was a little bit worried sharing that picture of myself in the Arby's meat suit with the rest of the group <laughs> last week because I just figured it might get everyone jealous and like you know, and and I hope it did. I hope it did that. You 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 need to. To, to wear that for Halloween every year from here. Oh, on. it's gonna be it's gonna be a favorite. It's super comfortable, by the way. Oh my god, it's so comfortable. I did not I did not expect that. Keep sit, sit by the campfire. Oh, it's great. Fireplace. It's be, it is one of those like great like campfire outfits. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank, thank yeah, you th- for the uh yeah, thank, thank you for the thank Arby's you guys good. for the food. Yeah. It's good. You, you mentioned DPOY earlier in the show, and that was one of the awards we didn't yeah. get to with Will and Sam. Like this is it, it's Parsons or Miles Garrett, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a three man race according to the odds, right? It's Parsons, Garrett, and Watts a little bit behind them. I see some love for Max Crosby recently. That's a, that's a no. I, he's, that's, he's a good, he's a good he's player, a player, but the he's Raiders, a player. The Raiders, the Raiders are going to be five and twelve. There's no way right. defensive player of the year award is going to go to uh, a I, team that's five and twelve. I think it's going to be. Miles Garrett is my guess. I, hope so. um, <laughs> I got him at five plus five. Yeah, earlier in the I, year. I, I think, hope so. <laughs> you know, I just think that. His ability to – he's the best player on the field each week, right? And, yes. And I – Parsons – do you feel the way about Parsons each week? I I don't always feel that same way. But, again, we're talking about this before they put the Giants and have, like, four sacks this weekend. That's the thing. It makes me feel stupid. Um, but Miles Garrett's going to play in bigger games down the stretch, too, in, in, in that division. So he'll get more highlight on, on what he's doing. Um, but he's had an incredible season, man. I, I think that yes. he's – that he is um, – He's in there. There, I will tell you next season, guys. Just just bookmark this. There's an inefficiency in the sack props before the season. Most of them sit like 13 and a half. I took them all over. I took Parsons over, Watt over, Garrett over. Like they're not a good. I took Bose over again. They do not set them high enough. These these guys have 16 sacks a year if they're good. I like it. And they don't they don't set the market well. I mean, I miss I miss I miss that I missed that note preseason. Uh yeah, sorry about that. Um so I, that that's something I take each year, and I feel like it's you know obviously you're you're hoping someone gets hurt, but thirteen and a half sacks is not a lot for these top end pass rushers. They're they're getting fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen sacks. So especially um, now with seventeen games, yeah. So I like uh, I like Garrett in this instance. Uh, well, one, one one of the one of the games that Mike uh, Michael Parsons will be playing in that is not one of the bigger games regular rest of the season, but it's a game where I think he's going to have a bunch of sacks is, is this week against the Giants, and that. Like, if you're still alive in your survivor contest, congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. It's cut and dry this week. Like if you have Dallas Cowboys, yep. and you don't need to save a team for Thanksgiving, like it, it, you're using Dallas this week. Like I use Dallas. Yeah. And it also now opens up an opportunity to bet. As I was talking with Will, like betting against the giants and survivor every single week. Cause they're, they're, they're not good. With Tommy DeVito at quarterback. Like they, they have zero chance. Of scoring point, I, I, you probably can't set team totals low enough with the Giants. So, if you got the Cowboys, it's an, it's it's easy. Yeah, I played the Cowboys. I just made it easy for myself this week and, and be done with it. Um, would you play the Bengals against the Texans? No, I would not. We we kind of hit on that. Like I like the Texans plus the points this week. Not fully there yet in terms of making them an official pick, but if I had yeah. to play them, I would. Bengals, you mentioned, had those injuries, so like. Maybe they're coming off of the game last week. They have a little bit of a letdown. Seattle, I wouldn't trust. I wouldn't like, trust like I said, at all. I like I like Washington. So like, if you don't have Dallas, <laughs> and you want to take my advice on yeah. being careful with those other two common favorites, that leaves two options for the coin flippers in like a coin flip the list of weeks. You got the, the Falcons oh. golf oh, God, against no. Kyler Murray, absolutely not, and, and the Cardinals, or team 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 bad B option. 
Steelers in there who DEI nope. against nope. the Packers. Nope, not doing that. But what if you what if you don't so if you don't have Dallas? Oh, I, but if you have if but if you don't have Dallas and you don't have Cincinnati I, I, and you don't have Seattle. Probably Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Or Buffalo hosting the Broncos. I'm assuming people use Buffalo yeah. as well by now. Probably Pittsburgh, yeah. But, but if you have used Buffalo, that would be that would probably, be logical as well. Probably Pittsburgh, I think, right? Yeah. And that has to be it has to be Pittsburgh. Um so, yeah, that's where I was survivor. Let's recap Bears two wages before we get to our, our best bets uh, and Fox Super 6. Uh, you have the Chargers plus three hosting the Lions, and you have the Commanders on the road getting six and a half against the Seahawks. Uh, Bear, our best bets this week are first. We're against each other this week, buddy. Oh, uh, we're giving it opposite sides yes. to guarantee one, one set of phone, 900 numbers wins. Well, it means the game's going to land on three. <laughs> the Niners are going to win by three. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> so let's you go first. Make your case. Yeah, I I, I think the Niners needed that week off after the yeah. three M losing streak. Uh, Trent Williams is out again, but they do get Debo back, and I think hopefully the ch- I'm banking on uh, the Chase Young acquisition helping that defensive front with Wilkes now being moved to the field. I think that's a uh, that could be a factor. They're changing things up. I think this is still the most talented team in the NFC. Uh, even though the, the record now is behind the Eagles. Um, I, I know Jacksonville has won five straight, but this is a big step up in competition from what what they faced. I um, I know the pass rush and the defense has been lacking lately for the Niners, but I'm hoping that my faith in this team will be restored. So I did indeed uh, lay the three. I like Jacksonville plus three. Yeah, <laughs> Obviously, we're on, the other, we're on the other side of this. I think Jacksonville is one of those teams that we forget about because they play – in the South. And I think at times and we, in, we, and we, in and, Europe and, in Europe, <laughs> and they're on a buy, they're off a buy as well. So is the Niners and they just win a ton of football games recently. They've won, I think what in the last 20 games, they've lost five and three been to Kansas city. One was to Houston this year. Like they, they, they just, we forget about them because they're in a region of the country that we associate with college football. They have a good offensive line. Now there, there will be, you know, Niners defensive line is good, but the Niners defensive line has not played as well as last season. Trevor Lawrence is really good. They have weapons. They're rested. They're off a of bye defensively. They're just solid, right? They play good, solid defense. And I think when you when you give a, a, a Doug Peterson a bye we've, over his career, where he's gone rest, he's, he's covered the spread. And so I, I like the fact that both these teams are coming in off of off of a, off of a bye. The NFL is well. doing that this year. They're they're having teams. A lot of teams like like we will talk about this game. I know, I know next week, Chiefs and, and Eagles. They're all both off a of bye too. So you get this kind of heavyweight matchups between two teams off a of bye. It makes it fair, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, both teams off a of bye. Um, all right, guys, it's not too late to play the free Fox Super Six game for Week Ten. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars in weekly cash prizes. Make sure you uh, check, check out, out your Fox article. Sports. Yeah. Com. The article will be up. Uh, or probably maybe is up already by now, by the time this podcast drops on, on Friday. Yeah. So free money. What's, what's wrong with taking a free stab at free money? Nothing, nothing, nothing yeah. at all. So make sure you uh, download that app and, uh, and, and make your picks. Do you have a favorite place to eat in state college where you'd be this weekend? <sighs> I'm sure you've been there a lot. I've been there, but not as many times as you think. I think Allen street grill. Okay. It is a place that we that we've gone to in the past. I'm trying to get you some free food and merch right now. I, 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 I know you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually, usually, you see what happened a lot of times here when we go to state college is that the hotel situations like tough. So a lot of times, like we would rent had we'll have rented out houses. That's not the case this week. Um, but in the past, like so, like group of guys would just get together and yeah. they'd go out to the grocery store, go grill, fire up the grill oh, and nice. watch a game. So, so we, we would do that a lot in state college, but yeah, yeah I think Allen street grill might've been the name of the okay. place that, we, that right. we went to. Give us some free food, everybody. We'll, we'll try. <laughs> state, state college is one of those places. Once you get there, it's great. It's just one of the harder places to get to, but I did have a flight nut right into state college. So I'm happy. I, I had a little personal beef with like the whole talk about Oregon was too rural. Like Eugene was too rural to play in the big 10. I'm like, well, have you seen state college? Have you yeah. like ever tried to go there before? Champaign, Illinois. Yeah. Whatever. Personal West coast beef. bias. Yeah. West coast, West East coast. Bias. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever it was. Some well, bias. Exactly. No bias here. Cause we give out winners. Exactly. And you yeah. have NFL. We've done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. College different story. Yeah. So hopefully we got, 
Well, let's see. Well, well, we're, we're guaranteed to have at least one winner between us. No, well, I'm no, that's right. No, no. If it ends three. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It could end three. Maybe, maybe that would be it. Maybe that would be an appropriate uh, finish, finish for that game. So yeah, if, that, if that ends three, we're, we're, we're onto something. All right. We know it's one of those years. So it's another one in the books for, uh, for Will, for Sammy, for Jeff. I'm Bear. I appreciate you listening again, watching, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, checking us out on that YouTube page as well. If you want to uh, see the sexiest man alive here next to me, Jeff Schwartz. Until next week, plus you bet, the more you lose when you win.